what we're going to be doing in this video is creating two Niagara emitters and one Niagara system to pretty much create a muzzle flash. So we're going to have a little bit of smoke as well as a kind of a flash to it. So we're going to start off here by opening up our STG44 weapon animations, going to fire. We're going to zoom in and go to somewhere near the start. So just somewhere near the start here, we're going to right click, add a or play an Niagara particle effect, and leave it. Well, for now. Now we go over here to weapon effects. We're going to right click, create a new folder, call it muzzle effect. We're going to right click in here, create a new Niagara emitter off of a template. We're going to use a directional burst. So hit it. And let's call this one any underscore muzzle smoke. Now we can right click on this and create a Niagara system. Let's call this one ns underscore muzzle effect. So then over here in our STG, we're going to click on our Niagara effect. We're going to select the muzzle effect. We're going to attach it to our muzzle socket. like here. So now it'll come out like so, so we can see the effect playing. Now one thing that you're going to want to do as well, real quick, in our weaponbase.cpp, under the perform line trace, comment out our drawing of the debug lines so that way you can easily see the uh, effect happen. So do that, compile, and relaunch. So then we're left with this currently. So we have that crappy little effect. So we're going to alter it. So let's open our Niagara emitter. For starters, let's click on add velocity and cone. On the z-axis, let's set that to zero so it's going straight out. Let's disable gravity, so click on gravity force and hit the trash can. I want to leave drag. Let's go to our velocity and cone and lower these values. Let's do 15 and 30. So that, that'll give us a more smoky effect, and we can change this up even farther. So I'm trying to zoom in here by going over here to scale color. We have this good end of this curve here, and we're going to drag this initial curve pretty much all the way down. It's going to give it a very smoky see-through effect. Now when we save it and we look at it, it looks like smoke. So now we can alter this. So go to spawn burst instantaneous, change the spawn count to something like 10. Just give it a little puff. And there we go. There's our basic smoke effect. Uh, you can change other stuff in here if you want. I'm going to change the lifetime. I also want to increase the spawn count to 15. and then lower the lifetime. So loop duration, I'm just going to try 0.5. So minimum and maximum for the initialized particle, I'm setting to 0.5. That's about good for the max. And I'm going to do 0.1 for the min. And leave it. So here's our smoke. And that's pretty much how we want it. So now we can do a flash effect. We're going to close our muzzle smoke. I'm going to right click again, create a new Niagara emitter. And this one, I just want to do an empty. So I'm going to hit finish, change this name to any underscore muzzle flash. Now we can open this up. We're going to chain, go to emitter update, spawning. On burst instantaneous, set the spawn count to do five. And here you can see we have a little sprite. So now we need to think about kind of how we want to have this actual effect. So I want to do a cone just like before. So I'm going to search for cone under particle spawn, add velocity and cone. We're just going to go on the x axis. Set velocity strength to 
five. Make that fifty. Right. We need to click on here. And we want to change the loop behavior to once. In that case, we're going to have to also drag this uh, red bar down here to the end so it actually loops properly. So we're going to be altering these particles to kind of give us a flash effect. So one thing I also want to do is I want to click on our sprite renderer. We have this default sprite material. We're going to click the little browse to. And it took us to it. So I'm going to control W. Actually, I'm going to copy it. And I want to paste it. I think we can copy it. Paste it in here. So I'm going to rename this one to underscore muzzle flash. I'm going to open that up. And here we have this kind of deal. What we're going to be doing is pretty much taking the, uh, we're going to want to alter the color so it's not straight white. So what I want to do is I want to take, I'm not going to bother with any of this. I'm going to leave the particle color, remove you. We're going to set, I'll search for a parameter. We're going to look at a vector parameter. I'm going to call this one base color. And this is pretty much just going to be an orange kind of look. We're going to plug the base color into the emissive color. You can kind of see the uh, brightness it has. So I'm going to hit save. And close it. Now we can change this one to our muzzle flash material. It has that color to it and a slight bit of glow. So we're going to want to be increasing this a good bit. So what we can do here is under render we can add a new light renderer as shown here and under particle update search for color and this color i want it to be pretty much the same color as this muzzle flash material we click it we can see the values well we used to we're just going to give it kind of a the similar color but we're going to change this here this value, we're going to crank this up to like, let's do a thousand. And I'll show you why here in a second. Because our light renderer goes based off of this. So let's set our radius scale to five. And it should be following along with the color. So I'm going to alter this. So we're going to open up our muzzle effect for the Niagara system. We're going to pretty much add our muzzle flash to this system. So down here, we're going to drag our muzzle flash underneath muzzle smoke, and they are now combined. As you can see right here. Whoops. Trying to get it lined up decently. Okay, I'm changing this movement. I'm getting out of orbit. I hate that. There we go. So this is our current effect. So I want to drag this out here and bring it in closer. So here's our muzzle flash and we have our little puff of smoke. So we need to alter this so that our muzzle flash is just a very quick instantaneous flash. We want to set the lifetime to 0.05. So it's just that quick little flash. We have that. And we can also alter the particle size. So, do, do, do. let's see. Actually, let's look at this. Yeah, we're going to want to alter it up a little bit. I'm trying to think of what would be a good route to, well, good thing to change here. In our light renderer, uh, I do want to have a little more of a flash, so I'm going to go to the wall and shoot, and as you can see, the light's kind of bouncing off the wall. That's a little aggressive. So, 
what I want to do is I'm going to go to our color and lower this value down to 300 and look at it again. And I think that's a lot better. So let's see. I want to open up the cone angle. That'll give it a more of a randomness to it. Now I guess we can try to set the sprite size. Let's see. Scale? Well, we're not really going anywhere, so we can't necessarily scale this for speed, I think. Scale sprite size by speed. Velocity threshold. Let's see, what was the speed? So we're going to set that to, eh, I guess, fit about 50. Minimum scale, 0.5. Maximum being 0.1. 0.05. And I'll give it kind of a more rain, like a just more randomness kind of to it. Lower this even farther, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And that let's see what that looks like. It's a little bit better in my opinion. But I'm not entirely, I don't like how it's a solid color. So we're going to alter the alpha. I go to like 0.13. Now that it's a little bit see-through, we're going to want to scale it up some. Let's set the uh, max scale back to 1. And I think that's, you know, that's okay for now. Obviously, I would hope you would go a little bit farther into this. I'm fairly new to Niagara, but this is just kind of so far what I've just done for my little bit of learning. We can also lower this to like three. It'll give it more variation just because there's less particles. So that's another thing and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. We now have our little muzzle flash effect. We can see this from other clients as well, since it's linked to the animation. I did not mean to actually close the animation, but let's look. That's where it looked like the animation was off. Animation looks funny because we can't actually see it. But yeah, we now have our Niagara effect. So I'm just going to move the effect playing in a bit. It's right at the start. Same thing with the sound. And hit save. Then we have our effect playing right from the beginning, so we can add this to our other weapons. So we're M1 Carbine. Maybe the same thing. Add Niagara Particle Effect. Bring it to the start. Select our muzzle effect. And attach it to our muzzle socket. So now, we have the effect coming out of here. I want to create a dedicated one to pistols. So I'm going to copy this Niagara system, paste it. I want to name it pistol. So it's going to be just barely anything. There's not really going to be any smoke. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on our muzzle smoke here. And our Niagara system 
for the pistol. And we're going to look at the spawn count. Let's change that to something very low, like 5. Or even 3. So it's almost no smoke. And we're going to lower the muzzle flash a good bit, too. Which is all to this to like 1 and 1. So it's like barely anything. And let's look at it. So we're going to select the 1911 for our default pistol. And I just realized I forgot to set it up in the animation. We're going to open our 1911 fire animation. And our right click. Add an agar particle effect. It's going to be our muzzle effect for the pistol. And it's going to be attached to the muzzle socket. So, as you can see, there's like barely anything. I do want to increase the flash back up. Let's do three and three. And we'll drop that a little bit. So two and two, right in the middle. So that way there's just a little something. So now let's add it to our fire empty. Same thing, add the Niagara effect. That was not it. Add it to the beginning. Select the pistol effect. And attach it to the muzzle socket. Hit save. And there we go. We have just a very light amount of smoke, and we still have our casings and all that kind of stuff bouncing around, playing accordingly. So, we now have a basic muzzle flash. So, as always, well, this will be the end of this video. As always, if you want to help and try to support me, my Patreon is linked in the description. And if you have any questions, my Discord server is also there. So, feel free to join us and ask anything you want try to help you out the best we can. So I'll see you in the next video.